So independent and dependent events are going to be a little bit different to the last lesson that we did. Um, last lesson we did was just regular or just probability. So basically it's just for simple events. Uh, with independent and dependent events, these are more compound events. Now basically what that means is that um, with the probability that we did see yesterday, the more common word that you would see is or, meaning, hey, if I tell you, hey, you can pick between this pen or this uh, black pen. Okay. So between a blue pen and a black, uh, black pen, I'm saying pick one. If I say, Hey, get that blue and that black pen, that means that I need both of them at the same time. Okay. So th that is what basically a compound event is. I'm picking a combination of two or more simple events. But, um, the reason we added with, or is because it's an either, or now that we're using the word and we are now going to be multiplying. Okay. So looking at the first example I have here, it says, suppose you toss a quarter, a dime, and a nickel, list the sample space, and find the probability of getting three tails. Now, we haven't gone really much into sample space, but basically, once again, sample space is just me listing all of my options here. Um, so what we're going to do is I would always recommend to find your probability first. You can write out all your options if you want to first, which is your sample space, and then find the probability from that. But the sample space does have to be an exact number and I'll, I'll, you'll see what I mean more about that. Okay, so we're going to find the probability first because it'll give you that exact number. So the first um, category I have here is a quarter. Okay, and what they want us to find the probability is, is, is us getting a tails every single time. So the probability of me getting a tails the first time with a quarter is one half because I only have one side that is the tail and then I have two sides to a coin. Then I am multiplying that because once again, we're, we're looking at all these uh, events at the same time, okay, is a dime, okay, same exact process. It is going to be one half because I only have one side that is a tail on a dime and I have two sides. And then lastly, I have a nickel, one over two because there's only one tails on it and then um, two sides. Okay. When I do multiply one half times one half times one half, I do get one eighth. Now, what that one eighth means is that I only have one option that is tails, 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 meaning the three tails, but I have a total of eight different options. Your bottom number, your denominator in these probabilities, your final probability, is always going to be how much your sample space has to be. And it's going to be that exact number. It cannot be any less. It cannot be any more. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and list my options. Now, what I mean by options is in the order that my uh, coins are given to me, so quarter, a dime, and nickel, I'm looking at what are the options of me um, writing R, sorry, me getting a tails first, a, a heads first, or, or um, vice versa. So like for a dime and a nickel. So first, I'm going to say we do have the option of getting a tails first. We have another option of getting a tail second for the dime, and we also have an option of getting a tails for the nickel. So this is one option I have. I have tails, 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 which is that one option that I have for the tails, tails, tails. Um, we can also get a tails for the quarter, a head for the quarter, or sorry, for the dime, and then a tails for the nickel. That's an option. We can also get uh, tails for the quarter again. We could get a head for the dime, and then we can get a head for the nickel. Okay. Um, we can also do heads for the nickel this, or sorry, for the quarter this time, tails for the dime, and tails for the nickel. We can also have heads for the quarter, tails for the dime, and heads for the nickel. We can also have heads, 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 meaning I flip heads all three times. We can also have, let's see, what else do we not have on here? We have tails, 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 heads, tails, tails, heads, head, head, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, and heads, heads, heads. So that's the biggest thing with, uh, this is why you want to make sure that you find the probability first, because if you look, we're kind of running slim to those options, okay? So you want to make sure that, hey, because my probability was A, I have to have A option. So I can't just stop here because this is all I can think of. I have to keep going, okay? So another option I can have is 
heads. Let's see if I can have another heads. Mm. Should be able to do another heads. Heads, heads, tails. Okay. And then another one would be tails, tails, head. Okay. So once again, it is very important that you write out that probability first or find that probability because it'll make it a lot easier to find, hey, what am I still missing? Okay. All right, same thing for the school cafeteria. When we're so, looking at that probability, um, when we write our statement here, so we're going to write the probability of pretzels and apple juice. I'm going to go ahead and put just HA for apple juice, okay? The biggest thing with these type of problems is your probability is always going to give, be given in that last sentence. So make sure you always give, uh, look, give a look at the last sentence because it'll tell you what exactly we're trying to find here, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the category. Since we do have two different categories here, we are going to have two sets of probability. So we're, our compound event is only going to be uh, consistent of two different uh, fractions. So looking at the first probability, since I want a pretzel first I'm gonna take a look at my snacks okay now keep in mind you're only taking one of each so I have for my snacks I want a pretzels there's only one option for the pretzels but I have two different options for the snacks so it's one out of two because it's in that specific category I then multiply because I'm going to get both, um, and I'm going to multiply it to the next category. Now, my next category are the beverages. If I look, I have three different options for the beverages. I have apple juice, milk, and bottled water. I'm going to put that over three. Okay. Now, I only have one option that is an apple juice, so that means that I'm going to have it over, or over one. Okay. From here, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the one half times the one third, and that gives me one six. Same exact process, it does want us to list our sample space here. So we're gonna list our sample space and I will have six options. I am gonna abbreviate again, so everything is gonna be uh, abbreviated here just to make it a little bit easier. So starting off with, um, our first option, remember you're getting one of each category. Let's say I get carrot sticks and apple juice. I can get carrot sticks and bottled water. And I can also get a carrot stick with milk. For the fourth one and fifth and sixth, since we did all the carrot sticks already, um, I'm gonna do pretzels and apple juice, pretzels and bottled water, and pretzels and milk okay if you look um this does go with the um probability that we have here because we only have one option that is probably our pretzels in apple juice and we have six different options okay now the only other thing that i want you to keep in mind is when you're listing your sample space and you're running out of like uh, different options that you can think of specifically please do not uh, put apple juice and carrot sticks okay if I go through a lunch line and I get carrot sticks and apple juice, that's the exact same thing as you putting apple juice and carrot sticks. So do not just flip them and think it's a different option. It is not. It's the exact same thing. Make sure that you do not do that. Okay. All right. Now moving on to independent and dependent events. So when we have independent events, um, that is the occurrence of one event that does not affect the probability of the other event. So basically, um, if I'm looking at two different scenarios, I'm looking, does the first thing affect what happens on the next um, specific event that's given to me, okay? Um, with dependent event, that is a little bit different because it does depend on the first probability. So this is the occurrence that an event that does affect the probability of the other event. What this is trying to say is that, let's say we're in a classroom and you work with partners, okay? If you pick, let's say, uh, Joel in class and um you guys become partners that means that it does affect the rest of the class because no one else can pick that person okay no one can pick you or joel okay so moving on to the um these problems right here okay we're just going to identify if they're independent or dependent so starting off with a it says a dime lands heads up and a nickel lands heads up okay um the first probability that i have here is just a dime if I flip the dime, is that going to affect what I get for the nickel? The answer is no for this one. So that is independent because it's not going to affect what happens next. Okay. 
Then you choose a colored piece, game piece, in a board game, and then your sister picks another color. Okay. This one is dependent because let's say we're playing life. Okay. And I pick the pink little card. That means that no one else in our group can pick the pink little card because I already picked it. Um, the next one, a number cube lands showing an odd number. It is rolled again and lands showing a six. This is independent because if I roll a number cube, which is a dice, okay, if I roll a dice and I get an odd number, when I roll my second one, it's not the, just because I rolled an odd number, it's not going to automatically give me a six, okay? That has, um, they don't have any correlation, so that is independent because it's not going to affect what I get next. And letter D, one student in class is chosen for a project, then the other student is chosen for a project. This is dependent. Because once again, if I choose someone for a project, I cannot pick that, or no one else can pick that person. Okay. All right. So now looking at the probability of uh, independent events. So we're going to actually find it. I'm not going to do too many examples on this one just because this is exactly what we did at the top. It's basically the exact same thing. So an experiment consists of randomly selecting a marble from a bag, replacing it. Um, and then selecting another mar marble. The bag contains seven blue marbles and three yellow marbles. What is the probability of selecting a yellow marble? Replacing it and then selecting a blue marble. So what we're going to do here is we're going to find the, um, the probability here. And remember, we're going to look at that last sentence to see what exactly we are finding here. They want us to find the probability of selecting a yellow and blue okay so we have the yellow and the blue now there are a few things that i always want you to underline the first thing is just the last sentence because for the most part like 98 percent your probability is going to be given to you at the very end another thing that i want you to keep in mind is the word replacing it or not replacing it or setting aside or just any words that say Hey, what are we doing with the mar the first marble? You want to make sure that you look at that because that's going to affect what happens next. Now, because I'm replacing it here, that means that I'm going to put that specific marble back into the bag. So it's not going to affect anything in the bag because I take it out and then I put it back in. doesn't affect anything. Okay. And the other word that I want you to circle or look at is the word and. Remember, when we look and we see the word and, that means that we are going to be multiplying. So now let's just look at the probability for a yellow marble. When I look at the yellow marble here, it is three. I have three yellow marbles out of 10 because I have a total of 10 here, okay? Then I multiply it because I am putting that yellow marble back. It is not going to affect the total amount that I have. I will still have 10. So that means that my probability for blue is seven because I still have seven blue marbles and I still have 10 marbles in total in my bag. When I multiply those, you will get 21 over 100, okay? All right. So those are the basics of the independent, just like we those examples that we did at the top. They're about the exact same thing. Now, moving on to dependent. This is where you want to make sure that you are reading the questions very, very carefully. Eventually, all these questions will be put together, so you will have to classify, hey, is this independent or dependent first? But if I look at these... Um, this affects it, my second probability, okay? This is what my equation is saying. The probability of A and B equals the probability of A, a times the probability of B after A. Basically, what that means is that when I have the probability of A, I have to figure out what's happening with that before I can write the probability of B, okay? So example A, it says a bag contains 10 red marbles, 12 white marbles, and 8 blue marbles. Two marbles are randomly drawn from the bag. What is the probability of drawing a blue marble, not replacing it, and then drawing a red marble? So once again, I'm going to look at my last sentence to see, hey, what are we looking for exactly? We're trying to find the probability of a blue marble and a red marble. Okay. All right, then from here, what we're going to do is we need to look at, are there any other keywords? We have the word and right here, but we also have not replacing it this time. Since we are not replacing it, that means that I'm taking that blue marble, and you want to make sure you go in that specific order, in the order that's given to you. Since blue is first, I'm drawing blue first. 
I'm taking it out of the bag and I'm not putting it back. Okay. So let's look at how many marbles we have all together. Okay. We have about 30. Well, we have 30 marbles. So we have 30. Okay. And then if I look at blue, I have eight marbles. Okay. Now, when you take a marble out of a bag and you had 30 to begin with, if you take one out, which is that blue one, you now have 29 marbles in total. You don't have the 30 anymore because you took one out, okay? Now, the red is not affected because the blue is what I took out first, not the red. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the red, and that contains 10 red marbles. Now, when I multiply that, that does give me 80 over 870. You can simplify if you want, or you can leave it as is. And lastly, I have um, example B. We'll do one more. So a snack cart has six big bags of pretzels and 10 bags of chips. Grant selects a bag at random, and then Iris selects a uh, bag at random. What is the probability of Grant selecting a bag of pretzels and Iris selecting a bag of chips? With... The last sentence, once again, I'm looking at that last sentence to figure out what are we looking for. We're looking for pretzels. Oops. And chips. Okay. So I'm just going to find the, the probability of the pretzels first. I have six bags of pretzels, but remember, this is all in a cart. So that means I have a total of 16 snacks. Now, think about it when you guys go to the store or when you're in the lunch line, okay? When you take a bag of chips, that is not being replaced, okay? Sometimes in the, the stories, they will not say if it's going to be replaced or not. So you'll just have to use your common knowledge here and make sure that, hey, if I take a bag of chips here or Grant takes a bag of chips, um, that we're not putting those bag of chips back, okay? So because they're not putting those bag of chips back, I don't have 15 or 16 bags of chips anymore. I now have 15. Now it's Iris's turn and she wants the chips. So we didn't touch the bag of chips. We did the pretzels. So I still have 10 chips. Okay. So when I go ahead and multiply that, I now have 60 over 240. 